Hi, everybody. This is Jean Beauvoir, and you are listening to Tom and Zeus on Shout It Out Loud Cat. Oh, boy. Here we go. Oi. Stop pressing the button. Star Brooker Simmons. Star? Paul Stanley. Is that what he does? Stop shouting. Ace Bradley. He's not what you would call a handsome man. Oh no, here come the kiss times. Is that a positive thing? Okay. Alright. I'm gonna grab me an ice cold mellow yellow. Why? Why do that to the fans? Stop it. Why? Because the fuck will collapse. 617 You do? Hey, fucko. Do you like Kiss? Settle down. Hello. Hey, what's up there, Kiss Army? Tom and Zeus, another episode of Shout It Out Loudcast. Episode 293, Animalized Tour. Yeah. Horror episodes, baby. Tom? Uh, we're going to do another tour, but before we do that, we always go backwards before we go forward and we review last week's episode. And last week, uh, we did disc three from Creatures of the Night box set. Yep. And I know we did a poll. How'd that go? Yes, we did. So that disc was full of a lot of demos, outtakes, rarities, and there were a couple of brand new things or at least demo versions of things that existed. Full songs, not not alternate take 19 uh, so the poll was, which of these is the best? Or which of these was your favorite? Was it Legends Never Die? The version of Not for the Innocent with Paul and Gene? The demo of It's My Life? Or the outtake for Betrayed? No surprise, Not for the Innocent with both Paul and Gene runs away with 49%. The demo of It's My Life at 27%. And then Legends Never Die and Betrayed both tied at 12%. couple comments there. Our buddy Tony from Restrain. Yeah, Tony. Restraint spelt with a Y. You can ask him why that's the case. For me, It's My Life is overrated. I don't dislike it, but there's a reason it never made it onto a Kiss record. But then again, they have released two full albums full of meh songs. Uh, see, that's the Tony we love. That's the Tony we love. We we love that Tony? Yes. That, well, is, well, is, well, is there another Is there another Tony? <laughs> Just saying, speak for yourself. <laughs> oh, come on. All right. Nowhere fan. I went with legends, although I do like them all. The episode was a real surprise to me as I had no idea that there was any good stuff on that box set. It was a nice feeling to hear some quote, new kiss. Ryan Krieger says it's my life for sure. This could have easily replaced. I love it loud as the quote anthem on creatures, not for the innocent is good, but it made more sense on lick it up betrayed was a warrior tune, which was Vinnie Vincent's band pre-Kiss. I didn't, I actually didn't know that, Brian. You taught us something new. Obviously, Paul was planning on rewriting the lyrics. Oh, what could have been. And we're going to move along from Twitter here. So, Zeus, you can take it from here now with Facebook. Ooh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, Bobby Kenner, what a kick-ass episode. You boys had me rolling as usual. The Paul impression on Jeopardy was damn good. Beethoven's greatest since 500, Alex. Awesome <laughs> call back on Mickey Free from the Chappelle show. That dude Ow. was full coming to America soul glow on that episode. Awesome rundown on Creatures Disc 3, though. Betrayed was a standout for me. The guitar intro had some balls on it. It just needed some cleanup and more weight on Paul's vocals. Appreciate the mention. As always, fellas, keep rocking. Yeah, Bobby. Still Luke sends a photo of his copy of raise your glasses at the pool and says, Hey, Tom and Zeus and many others. What to dive in first. Nice. By the way, love the continual pictures we're getting of everybody posting them holding the book, the great reviews. You guys rock. Thank you so much for the incredible support. You guys are amazing. Yeah. And he also goes on to add, and by the way, you guys really do what we fans post. How nice is that? Great creatures episode, by the way, Sunny greetings from the holiday place in Spain, though a big Belgian thank you for the book and your shows. So many laughters. It's crazy. Oh, and in my neck of the woods, Luke is pronounced as Luke and Cly as, oh, never mind. 
Uh, keep up the great work. You guys rock, and so does the book. So I believe you're Belgium via Spain, or is it Spain via Belgium? Nice. Either way, thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, and it's pronounced Cly or Sky. I, I don't know. But I hope I said it correctly. But thank you for the uh, the kind words. Much appreciated. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Love that. Over on Loudcasters, uh, Rick Hickey says, another great episode, gentlemen. Something I noticed. The verses in Betrayed sound like dirty white boy. Check it out. Okay. Oh, okay. A foreigner. Hmm. Okay. That's right around the time Rainbow was trying to do the foreigner sound. Sounds like everybody's trying to copy foreigner at that era, huh? Yeah. Good point. Yep. Uh, Mike Murphy. Yep. Another fun Saturday. Listen, totally agree about how kick ass not for the innocent is on this disc. Love this version. Also totally agree about Paul's version of God of Thunder on the destroyer box. I love both versions, which is unusual. Usually if I like a song, when I hear a demo or alternate version, I have a hard time liking it. Keep up the great episode, gentlemen, and have a nice weekend. Isn't that nice of Mike? Wow. It's way too kind. We're not used to that. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Our good friend, Sean DeHaan, really enjoy these episodes. Basically like the book entries on the not common tracks. If you like the book, you will like these episodes and vice versa. For me, the version of Not for the Insert with both Paul and Gene singing is the preeminent version, without a doubt. Bit surprised that this didn't make Creatures. Such a heavy track. Not sure why the version with Gene Sing is the version that made it to the album. This version is just so good. Easily the go-to version. Well, if we ever meet Gene in person, I have one question for him. I will ask him that question, Sean. Nice. Yes. Bunny Lebowski says, one thing that comes through in all these tapes and demos is that Eric Carr was a fucking monster. Yep. Great call. The great Kendall Lacey said, listen to It's My Life and added it to my latest playlist as soon as I heard the episode. Job done. Nice. Love hearing that shit. Yep. Uh, Jody Harriman. Stupendously awesome episode, Brozinski's. Yeah, I completely <laughs> in agreement that Not for the Innocent with both Kime and Stan sharing lead vocals, simply thunderous <laughs> work of art. Because of the fact on the Lick It Up CD, I would find myself completely bypassing that song, although I can sing it word for word, meaning I heard it enough times where it stuck, but it never landed as one of my favorites. Stan's voice is one that, when it's in prime shape, was the most electrifying, beautifully ranged instrument the band employed. Uh -huh. There was an unbelievable passion and expression that he could and often delivers that captivated souls of all kiss faithful. Have you ever guys heard the song, I will be with you where he duets with Sarah Brightman, the strength, the passion, the power of the man's voice beyond compare. Please play that song for your listening audience. We're not, I promise you there will <laughs> not be a dry eye in the house. <laughs> anyway, his vocal delivery in that song is phenomenal. And because I was not a big fan of the song on lick it up CD, I skipped over it when I got to the creatures night bike set. The episode opened my eyes. I'm moderately, severely grateful. That's the beauty of this show. When I think my kiss mind knew, knows it all, bank. I'm reminded that there's so much more out there to observe. Never stop rocking. Yeah, nice. Jody, I'm just not going to add. I uh, When I get to do an episode without playing tracks, I'm not going to voluntarily add another track on it. Otherwise, you can come feel free to edit all our episodes. Not a problem. So, there you go. You can, be, you can be our intern. Yeah, there you go, Jody. That, that, that opening is still available. Yeah, we'll take an intern any day. John Whiteman, Zeus hurt balls to the wall in Betrayed. Oh. Rick Hickey said, dirty white boy. I heard Sammy Hagar's, there's only one way to rock. It sounds like this is a bit too derivative and then made the right choice by not releasing it. This version of Not for the Innocent is so good, it made me actually want to buy this box set. I think Kiss songs where the demo is superior to the finished product would be an interesting conversation. Yep, and yep. I, the two that I always mention on this show, You're All That I Want, and obviously Mr. Speed. Go listen to those two demos from the box set, much better than the originals, and the originals are fucking awesome. Yep. Charles, don't call me Mark Eaton. When Not for the Innocent started, I thought Paul was going to have to send some muscle over to the studio across the hall to tell the guys from Accept to turn <laughs> down at a little. Love this version of the song. Musically feels like there may be a bit more bite to it than the version on Lick It Up. Uh, Not for the Innocent's My Life, Betrayed, and Legends Never Die, ranked in that order, are all gems that will deserve many more listens. Oh, and hey, I hope we can catch Ace on Pressure Lock Game Show. Yeah. Thomas, it was keep coming. 
<laughs> no way. No whammies. No whammies. Oh, jeez. Oh, I think I just made a whammy in my shorts. Oh, sorry, Peter. No gas. No gas. Oops. Sorry. It's funny. Lara used to call when I'd have an accident. She used to say, oh, Zeus. <laughs> oh, Zeus. What did oh. I do? <laughs> Lara used to say, oh, Ace. Did you make another whammy? Oh, jeez. That's why I always say no whammy. I got a little dookie in my pants. That's okay. I'll, I got somebody to clean those out for me. I pay him about 25 cents an hour. <laughs> no whammy. That's Ace, the whammy. Ace That's the fucking. Do- Ace just doing game show tours. <laughs> game show lover. I didn't print the word game show lover. What's that all about? Fucking Jesus. All right. Uh, we'll end with Thanos Akratides, the Greek Thunder from Down Under. Yeah. Love the show, guys. Firstly, I finally got my two books and started to dig into it. So proud of you guys of what you've done, along with beep. It's nothing short of brilliant. You deserve every bit of success you get. Into the disc three, I have to say I love Betrayed. So upset they never record a full tune. It has a brutal riff. Agree with you, both Not for the Innocence Brilliant would have been great to have two alternate versions properly recorded. It's My Life should have been recorded for the album. I think it's a great anthem and should have been released on either Creatures or Psycho Circus. I think it would have been a hit if it was the first single release from the comeback album. I raise my glass of Uzo on ice to you boys. Cheers. Yeah, Thonis. Love you, buddy. You know what? That's not a bad thought, Tom. If they released It's My Life as a Gene Ace Duet as the first single. Oh, that would the there piss. was there is there is no planet where Paul would ever allow that. But but you get the fucking hype that would get. Oh this yeah, album. of course. An Ace Jeans uh, duet, duet. As the first single on their yeah. comeback album. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> hey Ace, that's not happening. Yeah, that would never happen. Hey, Literally. Fucko, what about my tune? Why aren't we releasing that as the first single? We're not. We're going to save it for a uh, <laughs> smashes, thrashes, and shit episode of Shout It Out Loudcast. <laughs> because that's a shit song, stupid. They gave it to you because they had to give you something terrible. <laughs> you know what? You know what that is, Beef? That's a whammy. It's a piece of poop. Paul is purposely sabotaging you, giving you that shit song. Figure it out, dumbass. <laughs> oh, that's a fact, by the way. Yeah, I know you think that was a sabotage. Oh, absolutely <laughs> oh, it is. On. Oh, it oh stop. That is clear. I love my conspiracy theories. That's <laughs> that's what I'm sticking to. <laughs> All right, Tom, over to you, buddy. All right, let's take a look at what we got on the Instagram machine this week. Our buddy Junior Vintage. Ace should do cool in the gang on his next <laughs> covers album. I'm thinking he can do a ballad like Joanna. Oh, or no. fresh with Joe <laughs> Walsh providing backing vocals. Joanna, I did a number two. You're the one who wiped my bum. <laughs> All it takes is somebody to just give us an idea. <laughs> I'm fresh. I'm so fresh. Well, gee, that's a lie. I, I haven't been fresh in 20 years. Roll me over and put some baby powder and some diaper rash ointment on me. And I feel fresh as a fresh. I need those dude wipes that I see on TV. Ooh, my God. pants are pretty moist at this point. I don't know what that's from. You know, it's amazing. <laughs> Every fucking week. Why? Why is it first it was first ace? We've gone we've gone from ace in my shed to ace in the dating game to ace to Jeopardy. Now ace is just making the the, the game show circuit now. Singing singing fucking uh, R and B classics from the eighties now. Yeah, that's right. All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, let's go. We're gonna get through a couple emails and then we'll uh, we'll we'll finish up here. We got one from our new friend here. Vinny Beninato. That's right, Vin. <laughs> hey, guys. Thanks for the shout out last week. Makes me want to watch Back to School now. Okay. 
Love the conversation around the third disc, and I have to agree, the demo version of Not for the Innocent is fucking awesome. I actually prefer this version. Love the trade-off between Gene and Paul. Great stuff as always. Also, I hope Ace's battle with IBS is never <laughs> resolved because it's too <laughs> damn funny. We All the best. <laughs> you hope so. <laughs> you should see my fucking bandmates, what they think so. Woo. Guys, don't hit the bathroom for another 10 to 15 minutes. Woo. Shock me. Make my IBS feel better. Woo. All right. Uh, then we got a great email from our buddy West Beach. I love these box set bonus discs of demos and unreleased songs. And this one might be the best one. Starting out with Legends Never Die, the same track that Wendy used on her solo album. It was a little disappointing for me because that was one last song that we had and a track that I wasn't able to play on. Yes, because for those who don't know, West Beach was in the Plasmatics with Wendy o. Williams. If I recall, it was Gene Eric in the Plasmatics drummer T.C. Tolliver who provided backing vocals. I took a try at them, but Gene had me sit it out as my New York wine didn't blend in with the others. Your favorite German chanteuse, Doro, also covers the song on her Fight album. Yeah. Keep up the great work, Wes. And we will finish up emails with one from our good friend and longtime contributor, Mark Bomer. Fantastic and especially hilarious episode. You guys never fail to entertain, even with the relatively challenging subject of critiquing a disc of music, incompletes, and outtakes. As any of my opinions on the tracks on disc three would be equally incomplete, here's my forever memory of creatures that I have firsthand. 1983, I'm in college. I'm drunk on the new Creatures of the Night LP. Finally, after the horrors of Dynasty Unmasked and Music from the Elder. How dare you, Mark? My band is back, I say. I enthusiastically talk three of my dorm buddies who are not KISS fans to go to a show at Kobo Arena. We get there. Get to the main floor. The plasmatics come on. I look around, and the place is empty. But I figured it would fill up for KISS, but then KISS comes on, still empty. Attendance was reported at 7,600 that night versus a 12,000 capacity. Honestly, that place was lucky to have 5,000 people there. It was that empty. As for the show, fantastic. The book continues to be so entertaining and insightful, guys. Thank you, and keep up the great work. Awesome stuff, Mark, as always. We appreciate you every week, buddy. Thank you. And we'll turn it back to Zeus to wrap it up. Yeah, we're going to uh, YouTube. And uh, we have Thomas Hubner, 697. 697 <laughs> Hello, Tom and Zeus. I listen to your podcast on Spotify every week, but normally I don't write comments. I have bought your book already, but how to read such a thick book? You're insane. That inspired me to rank all 260 songs oh, on a Spotify God. playlist with the title Kiss. Oh, all studio shit. songs ranked from best to worst. Then I started with the song on the bottom and listened to it and read the comments in your book and ranked the songs new. This is what I will do with all the songs from top, uh, from bottom to top. One song after another. By the way, the rankings changes a lot if you really listen to the songs. After 15 songs, I must say I love the reviews of your people. A little more negative than I thought, but there, this is at the bottom of the songs. Seems like this Courtney chick has chosen to review nearly all my worst songs. That's oh, weird. No. So now I have Kiss Fun for the next two to three months. Thank you for that. And in the end, I will give the number one song 260 points in the last one, one point. Can't wait to see the final points on every album. Keep your great podcast going, guys. Wow. That is fucking impressive. Thomas, yep. man, appreciate you sharing what you're doing. Appreciate that you're using the book as an incentive. Appreciate that. It's inspired you to get back into the Kiss music and the catalog. That's yeah. what the book is for. Yep. And we love it. We love ranking stuff. We love looking at the songs and changing our minds. We've been doing this podcast now. This is year six, and we're still changing our mind on songs. So congratulations, Thomas, because you are a comment of the week. Good answer. Good answer. I like the way you think. I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> yeah, Thomas. Thank you, buddy. Love that. That's great stuff. And what we do next is we give a shout out to our Patreon family. Uh, not quite as much as last week where we had five. 
we still got two more and we're still expanding an already incredible list of Patreon members. This week, we welcome Chris Lucas and Tom. Tom, is that you? It's not me. No, I would. <laughs> so email is uh, has his last name. I'm not going to read it because his name is Tom. So I'm assuming he didn't want that to be out there. But Tom, you, I'm sure you know who you are. And Chris Lucas, uh, thank you both for joining as Spaceman members. <laughs> uh, Thanks. <laughs> I, I need to be getting a cut off of this shit. You guys, <laughs> what the fuck? Anyways. <laughs> Uh, Tom and Chris joined our Patreon family. Our Patreon family, again, is at record numbers. Uh, yep. We've never had this many members, and we can't thank you guys enough. Patreon is where, if you join, you help the show. There's four different tiers. You get, make a monetary contribution to help the show. We have a couple of projects coming up for us that... Uh, oh, yes, we do, and they're going to be fun. Yeah, that Patreon is helped with or helping with. So... This all goes to a good place and it supports the show and it makes us want to work harder and constantly give you more and more stuff. Recently, we were on with a uh, rather well-known podcaster and more, and he complimented us. And you'll hear about this by saying, he's like, there's just something about you guys. I listen to you guys all the time. Like you keep coming out every time I think that kiss has been drained of any topic. You guys keep coming up with stuff that interests me. How the yeah. hell are you doing it? And uh, I, we took that as a, a source of pride yep. and uh, and a source to for us to be acknowledged and recognize that we don't give up. We're not here to just to sit on our asses and just shoot the shit. We're here to constantly give you good content to because we respect our audience. And if it's not good enough for them, it's not good enough for us. We need to do better. And we're always striving to do better. Patreon rewards us for doing that. So thank you people out there in the Patreon world that come and subscribe and help the show out. In turn, never mind the content that you get from us, but you also get involvement in the show, polls, uh, ARC album of the month pick, um, merchandise, uh, video chats, um, the board, which is fucking great, and so much more please go to patreon.com and sign up or you go to our website shout it out loudcast right on the landing page click on patreon it'll tell you the four different tiers choose one that fits your needs and come and help the show it's a big help to us and we got a lot of things coming so patreon has been uh integral to the growth of shout out loudcast and will continue to be integral to the growth of shout out loudcast so thank you tom and chris lucas much appreciated. We love you guys. And thank you to our whole Patreon family. Yeah, thank you so much, Tom and Chris, for joining the family. We appreciate it. And I always say whether you're brand new like Tom or Chris or you've been there since day one or somewhere in between, it doesn't matter. We love you guys, and we are extremely grateful for all of your generosity. And like Zeus said, we love to give back to you guys. We never get bored of doing what we're doing. We can't sit still. We're always thinking of something new and different and creative. And Zeus is right. We're not just saying this. If you know us, we don't blow smoke up anybody's asses here. When we have something cool coming and we tell you something is cool is coming. It might not be another book right away, but it's something that's going to be fun, something that's going to add to the show, and uh, it's going to be you know in big part to our Patreon. So we're excited for that. So again, check us out on our website. Click on the Patreon link, shoutoutloudcast.com. Download the app and search for us, and welcome to the family, folks. Yeah, Tom, what we do next is we go over to Kiss World. Um, on Kiss World, I told you I, I was able to listen to that Paul Stanley interview that yep. he was on with uh, Billboard podcast. A, a lot of the same. A lot of the same. So what you got was, you know, Paul talking about his art, his air, the set list. I'm going to do that someday, driving a cab and sees to an Elvis concert. Oh, then, my God. Dude, like, he's like an automaton. Does he have any, like, original free-flowing thoughts? We've talked about it. It's like, what shows? They don't go to places where deep-cut Kiss fans are. They go to generic places, and those generic places ask the same type of question. But there were some stuff in the beginning that were quite interesting. They were asking about Pop House. Yeah. And... The purchase and he keep 
he kept like you know you get more and more details out of him a little bit slowly he's like you know what we put up is not really what you're going to see and he's like you know we're i'm not looking to see to put up a you know a virtual concert streaming that you'll be seeing what so, so what I'm like do do? then what are the so avatars exactly. so that so I, he's like you know when abba started the technology you know is now at a standstill but technology's gotten so much better He's like, we wanted to give them something to see, but it's nowhere near what we're trying to do. So I still think they're what almost the like, what did you do that for at the end of the final show? Then I still think they're like, they're walking through this, like, how is this going to work? And he did kind of hint that th- this thing can't be a rolling tour. It's no. going to have to be something built around and it's going to yep. be in Vegas. Yep. So again, I, I mean, I'm curious you're killing people with your expectations. If you're saying it's not going to just be because they were kind of like, are you going to be playing a soundtrack? Are you going to be playing music? Yeah, like, nobody knows streaming. Like he's like, well, we're, we're, we've got things in the works and uh, you know, he's being very vague and coy. Like, I don't know what the fuck they're going to come up with. If you're not going to just play a virtual concert, he goes, I don't want to see something where somebody goes, Oh wow. That looks like a Marshall lamp. Then. Okay. What are we doing? Here's my take on this. Okay. We say this all the time. It's the middle of September. Okay. It's been nine months. We haven't heard one word from Pop House, one word about anything that's even in the making. So when somebody like Paul is saying, Oh, yeah, we have something in the works, that's code for we have absolutely no idea what's going on. Nothing's happening, but we need to keep you involved and invested as a Kiss fan. So we're going to tell you that something's coming on. There's he nothing say, coming on. He said that they're, they're, they're in preparations for meetings that are set up. To have about, you know, how we're going to go about doing what we're going to ever end up doing. The way I look at it is I think they're going to make it like almost like a TV movie or an action packed movie and kisses in the roles and music gets played and music doesn't get played. And there's, but they're already doing that with the biopic, which we'll get to in a minute. No, but I'm saying like on stage, you'll see like, like a blue man group type of, because otherwise. Yeah. How long will this take before people run out and stop seeing it once the Kiss Army sees it? Well, we've said this before. Well, not even like, that. Yeah, that's people are going to run out. Like the music ain't going to keep it going. If you can spend all that money, it won't last. Well, but that's a good point, too. And we brought this up many times before. All these legacy acts that are that are either dead or just not, you know, not doing anything. They still are putting out product. Or, or catalog to keep you invested. Like, you know, Prince is still doing something. Jimi Hendrix is still doing some Elvis Beatles, your queen. Like they're still, they're still relevant in the world of kiss. It's been other than our fucking book. There's been nothing kiss related since they finished their show in December. Nothing. Yeah, But most of those companies, they only do like one a year anyways. I, I those- get that. But, but I just feel like, I just he did like say it, he did say in the interview that he's not done with music. Of course, because he's not. He's Soul Station Part Two, Electric uh, Boogaloo. I know they talked about, it, and then it was a wicked long detour about Soul Station, and yeah, and and then it was a conversation, and I kind of agree with him. This on my philosophy is like uh, he was talking about music, and I, I try to copy what they're doing. I'm not giving it my interpretation. He's like, I hate bands. Like he doesn't say I hate, but like he's like, I don't like when people take their songs and all of a sudden. I'm going to do a bossa nova version of this song in concert. It's like, I don't fucking pay to hear you do a, a bossa nova version of fucking uh, dream on by Aerosmith. No, do the fucking Aerosmith is, version. Is this coming from the same guy that decided to do a kiss concert with the Melbourne symphony orchestra behind him because he wanted to do a different version of a popular kiss song. Yeah, but that the same songs guy, are still, but the songs are still the same. They just have the I, music. I, I get it. They're, they didn't it. change the format of the songs. No, but they were radically different in a way. No, they just had musical instruments behind no, them. No, I know. They didn't, a, they didn't become a soul version of Love Gun. Oh, I would do well, that. Well, my darling, I want to give you my Love Gun. I would do that. I would do that. But I, it was a fun, that part was an interesting conversation. And then he threw out something like Otis Williams, the, the only guy still alive from Temptations. Like he said that yours as good as ours are just imagine, just my imagination. I'm like, there's no yeah. way in fucking hell he said that to you. And if he did, there's he no being, way he meant he, that. He was, he was being, being nice. kind. He was being kind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Paul didn't even say like, well, I know he was being kind. I just appreciate the sentiment. And this, that. It was just like, yeah. So when I hear things like that, and he okay. still tells the story about him telling, he told the story again about him talking to Rod Stewart and Rod yeah. Stewart's, oh, that's great. You're doing a solo album. Who's singing? He goes, I am. He's like, you can do that. He's like, oh yeah. 
Like, I think that's we're fucking on. awesome. What that is such a great line. Who's singing? <laughs> exactly. Oh, but poor anyway, Paul. But that was that was the interview that people are talking about. Paul yeah. did a small interview. His son did a recent interview too. It was pretty interesting. Yep. Uh, and uh, it was talking about his thoughts on Kiss and stuff, and hearing yep. the music and shit. That was interesting. Evan came across as pretty cool. He's yeah, got a and, tour coming too, right? Yeah, Amber Wilde is touring. They're actually opening up for a band that I've never heard of. Uh, but Amber Wilde, they're doing a 2025 tour. They'll be coming around our neck of the woods. Uh, so it could be worth checking out. I mean, we saw a little bit of them at Madison Square Garden. I mean, I, I, I mean, we're me and Zeus are critical as anybody, but I thought they sounded great. I thought the band was heavy. He's he can sing. So eh, yeah, God bless him. Guitar. You know, yeah, yeah he can He's play guitar. Good. So good for him. Yeah. Yeah, and basically that's really it. I know Peter's got some appearance coming up soon. You got the Creatures Fest, uh, Kiss Cancer Goodbye in Florida coming up soon. So other than that, really, same old, same old. Yeah, quiet again. Yep. All right. Let's take a little break, and let's see if uh, how Ace is making out on Wheel of Fortune. Ah, give me a couple A's. You know, that's how you begin the letter. That's how you begin my name, Ace, with an A. <laughs> okay, we're back, and uh, Ace had to uh, pick a few more letters. Uh, hey, give me an I. Give me a B. Give me an S. Oh, jeez, that's what I have. I don't need those letters, but a high panic at IBS. I figured I'd solve my own puzzle. We're supposed. I think we're doing it wrong. I think you're supposed to buy vowels. No, no, no. Hold on. I haven't seen that show since the seventies. So yeah, and unfortunately, uh, Pat and Vanna both had a talk to Ace that you have to pick the letters. You don't just say "gimme." It's not like doing a cheer. Like "gimme an A," "gimme a C." Ace doesn't know what he's doing. The poor guy. You got to buy a vowel. You know. Yeah, yeah. You got to buy vowels. You got to. Yeah, he doesn't know what he's doing. He really knows the alphabet. He doesn't know what he's doing. (laughs) I want to. I want a six month supply of depends. Woo! I'll burn through that in two weeks. Next week, catch me on the joke is wild. <laughs> that guy's face looked like the Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> who, who the host of Joke yeah. is Wild? Yeah. Who's that guy? Jack something? I don't, I don't know. He guys. looked like the fucking Phantom. Oh, God. I, I think it's the same guy. I don't know. Anyway, Tom, we're doing another tour, and uh, these are always fun. Uh, This one we're doing is the Animalized Tour. So this one had a lot of interesting things happen during it. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, we're approaching the 40th anniversary of the Animalized Tour. So let's get into it now. This is kind of interesting. You know, it's definitely not like a you know, a huge tour, you know, but there is some backstory to this one, of course. Yeah. So the animalized tour had about 119 shows. It started September 30th, 84 in England ends March 29th, 85 in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Uh, some of the opening acts were for a lot of this was Bon Jovi in Queens, right? And then yep. you had Dawkin, Crocus. Uh, I don't know who still over is and wasp. Oh, wow. yeah. They say the average attendance is about 6,200. But from what I understand, this tour, the album, and everything else was probably about as much as successful as they had anything in the 80s. Oh, without a Kiss, doubt. Without Kiss a doubt. This was getting back into it. They, the album, I think, eventually went to, I believe, double platinum. So it's like mm-hmm. their biggest selling 80s album, not counting smashes, thrashes, and hits, non-makeup album. The tour was getting back to success. MTV was playing um, Heavens on Fire, and they had the MTV uh, Live Uncensored Animalized concert. So yeah. they were starting to get their second wind here with this album. Yeah, it was Un- the first album since Dynasty to reach the top 20 on Billboard. Uh, certified gold on December 3rd, and then a week later it was certified platinum. And this came out at the right time because this is this is just on the verge of hair metal, glam metal taking off. And of course, Paul is like good looking. Heavens on fire was all over the place with that video, the outfits. 
um, yeah, it was perfect for them. I mean, look at the bands that were opening for them. Those bands are right on the cusp of hair metal. Bon Jovi before they became full blown hair metal. Dawkins before they became full blown hair metal. Um, so yeah, this was this was a good time for for Kiss for sure. Yeah, and the other part of this is, that everyone is kind of familiar with is this is the whole Mark St. John kind of saga. Yeah. Comes on as the new guitar player to replace Vinnie Vincent. Uh, plays on not fully on a- Animalize, and then only ends up playing for like three shows on this tour. Yeah, which is why talking about Kiss and uh, album releases and stuff. That's why I think people were like super excited when they did that Poughkeepsie off the soundboard because not only was it an Animalize live album, but it was Mark St. John's performance, one of only three that he that he did on the tour. So that was kind of unique for for the band, or especially for Mark, obviously. Making his appearance is a friend of the show, Bruce Kulick. Yep. Who comes on, who actually played a couple tracks. I think it was uh, Lonely is the Hunter and Murder in High Heels. I think he did some guitar work on those. Yep. And uh, he comes on as a temporary replacement and then the full time replacement and becomes a full fledged member before this uh, tour is over. Yeah. And he's featured prominently in Animalized Live Uncensored. And, uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I fit in smoothly. And if you watch Animalize Live and listen to his guitar playing, I think Bruce was the perfect fit that could hit all eras. Oh, yeah. He could do justice to the older stuff. He could do justice to the Lick It Up Creatures of the Night songs, which were all over this tour. Yep. The creatures lick it up because Kiss was like, we're the new band. We're not the stop playing fucking all the old shit. No Dr. Love, no God of Thunder shit. We're the new band. And they have a fucking ton of lick it up creatures of the night and animalized songs on these on this tour. And Bruce could hit all those. And then obviously, you know, he could hit songs in the future all the way up to Carnival of Souls. So I I just felt like his guitar playing, just listen to it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, we say this all the time about how much we love Bruce just as a guitar player, as a person. But Bruce is one of those rare guys, or maybe he's not as rare as I as we think or as I think. But he's a guy who is like he can shred with the best of them, but then he can be melodic when he needs to be. And you you said it perfectly. If you need him to play Colin Doctor Love, he can. If you need him to play Under the Gun, he can. Yeah, he he, yeah. he can he can do it all, and he can do it well. And he's controlled. He's refined. I just think he is just so flipping underrated for a lot of people. I mean, we and the people that listen to the show and, the, and our loudcasters, they know Bruce. But, you know, we did an episode a while back on Dorm Damage about underrated, like, 80s guitarists. And I don't even know if Bruce Kulik was on that list, if I can recall correctly. The guy should be, like, almost number one on that list. No, Mark St. John was. Remember? Exactly. Yes. Now you're right. I remember that. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I, I, I prepping for this episode, I watched Animalize Live a little bit. Yep. Just listen to do Creatures of the Night and everything. Yeah. He's fucking perfect on everything. Yep. Yep. Sounds fantastic. Yeah. Anyways, Tom, the, like we talked about, the uh, it starts off in late September, and the I believe what they did was they have the stage. They start off in England, yeah. and I understand that they used the old unmasked set, yeah, that they had for Europe, yep. the the stage, and they just painted that animalized, stupid animal print shit on the on the floor. Yep, and. Yep. Uh, you can see it mostly in the, you know, animalized live when they get to the States, they have the two ramps. They have the stuff where they come out from the top, the riser, Eric Har, yep. the riser. And then they have the ramps throughout the show. And then they have this just a wide open space with uh, uh, the leopard print or whatever it is, zebra. And then they have the big kiss sign behind. Yeah, them. it looks cool. I mean, it's, it's typical. It's typical, like eighties, hard rock glam pop metal kind of stage setup yeah, it's got, you would see it's this got the ramps the scorp- for them to like yeah the it's scorpions got, van yeah, halen exactly. yeah. you'd see this similar type of get up setup it's got the ramps for them to kind of run up and down safely and jump around and be active and animated and stuff and it's like you said it's got the animalized prints on it and stuff so i mean it, it's cool it's i mean it's they're not wearing makeup anymore so the so the gimmicks of all the visuals are kind of tempered down a little bit obviously they're they're moving around stage a lot, jumping up. Yeah, Paul's got tons of energy. Even oh, Gene's Paul is shot out of a cannon. Jesus, yeah. yeah. 
And uh, now you get it into the costumes. Yep. It's not quite asylum. It's not quite stripped down like lick it up. It's right in between. Gina just filmed the runaway, I believe. So he had that haircut. So he had to wear a wig, yep. that stupid wig. But he's like mostly wearing that leather outfit. Paul has got like David Lee Roth pants on, stripped mm-hmm. down shit, animal print all over. Bruce looks like a typical 84, 83 type, like hard rock gear that you would yeah. see somebody in rat or dock and wear, but not really hair metal, hair metal ish. Well, that's what I was then, just going to say. And then Eric was wearing the fucking leopard fucking jumpsuit uh, yep. on the drums. Yeah, well, that's what I was just going to say. Just like the sound of the band, the look of the band was the same. It was right on the cusp of the over-the-top hair metal asylum glammy look. They still look kind of heavy, but I do like how some of their costumes, like there's pictures of Bruce, it kind of embraces the animalized image. You know, he's got like some armbands and wristbands with like some leopard fur and skin. It's still on the verge of becoming kind of goofy with the hair metal, but it still looks kind of badass. Like you said, but it's goofy early rat, now, early rat, early Dawkin before it got super glammy. Yeah. Yeah. It's goofy now, but of the time they, it, just, it was badass. Everybody was kind, yeah. yeah it was everybody badass. was kind of like that. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. So there's not much detail there on the stage in the costume. Cause there were nothing really out of really out there. Like kiss has been known to do in the past. No. So, Let's get into some of the dates. They opened up September 30th, 1984. Tom, so, uh, you know, they have they have different set lists that we can go by. Now, on Wikipedia, they say this is the Europe set list. I'll read it to you real quick. Yep. And they have it as 16 songs. Detroit Rock City, Cold Gin, Strutter, Fits Like a Glove, Heaven's on Fire, Under the Gun, War Machine, Young and Wasted, I've Had Enough, Into the Fire, I Love It Loud, I Still Love You. Preaches the Night, Love Gun, Rock and Roll Night, and then Encore of Lick It Up, Black Diamond. North American set list is only 14. They write Detroit Rock City, Cold Gin, Creatures of the Night, Fits Like a Glove, Heaven's on Fire, Under the Gun, War Machine, Young and Wasted, I, uh, I Love It Loud, I Still Love You, Love Gun, Black Diamond, Lick It Up, and Rock and Roll All Night. Now, yep. for the first show... This was their set list, opening it up in England, September 30th, 1984, Bon Jovi opening act. They opened with, I've had enough. That's fucking different. Imagine the set list is fucking insane, by the way. Detroit Rock City. Burn, bitch, burn. First and oh. only time it appeared. Yep. Cold, grand opening, grand closing. <laughs> exactly. Cold gin. Strutter. Then you got Paul Solo. Under the gun. Fits like a glove. Gene needs a uh, uh, oxygen tank, probably, um, after those two. Get all you can take. Again, first and only time it was performed. In other words, grand opening, grand closing. Yep. Eric drum solo. Young and wasted with Eric now singing. Heaven's on fire. War machine. I still love you. I love it loud. Love gun. Preaches the night, rock and roll night, lick it up. Okay. That no, is fucking insane, dude. No black diamond, right? Th- that that set list right there. If you are a KISS fan that may have given up on them during Unmasked or Elder or something, and you're like, okay, that your your brain is melting with this kind of performance right here. This, I mean, look at these songs. I've had enough, but t- I mean, let's be serious. For all the shit that we give some of Animalize. There was some badass music for the era on that album, and they picked out some of the best ones for the set list. Not include, and then you throw in "Fits Like a Glove" and "Young and Wasted," and like you still got some stuff from Creatures. That's a heavy, kick-ass set list right there. Tom, I did this. Yeah. Okay. That's 19 tracks if you include the two solos that they have listed. Okay. Yep. Yep. From the end of the road set list, they're missing 12 songs from there. So you mean to tell me, Kiss, you could do a full concert and not have 12 of the, we have to have these songs in the set list. They didn't have Shout It Out Loud. They didn't have Deuce. They didn't have Say Yeah, obviously. Calling Dr. Love, 100,000 Years, obviously Cycle Circus. God of Thunder, Let Me Go Rock and Roll, I Was Made for Loving You, Beth, Do You Love Me, Black Diamond, not in the set list. Yep. Like you said, they were starting. To, they were shifting away. They still had some classics on here, but they were focusing on the heavy era, the creatures, the Think lick it up, this, the right? animalize. 
counties. I've had enough. Burn, bitch, burn. Under the gun. Fits like a glove. Get all you can take. Young and wasted. Heaven's on fire. War machine. I still love you. Creatures of the night. Lick it up. That's 11, 11 of songs. The nine of, well, technically 17 songs because the two of the other ones are solos. Yeah. 11 of the 17 songs are from those three albums. What a novel idea. A band oh. playing, a, a band, <laughs> a band playing songs from recent albums and including some classics. Wow. How insane. So when I hear people talk to me about bootlegs, Oh, I got this bootleg. Great. You got a 14th copy of fucking calling Dr. Love and I still love you and fucking rock and roll night and all that. No, 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 no. This is a bootleg I want. That opening night show. Yep. With two tracks that are only played once. Yep. With 11 of the songs from the last three albums. And in addition, you take Cold Gin from this era and you put it against other eras, not oh. the same song. Shot out of a cannon, dude. That's the fucking thing. That, that that is nuts. Okay, all the classic Kiss songs. What is? How are these songs done? What do we call this era? Fast Kiss. That's Fast Kiss versions, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's when you it, hear guys like Jericho say when they play songs like the classics, they play it under this era's type of music. They play them fast. Yep. They don't play Cold Gin like it's from the end of the road. Or from the first, you know, three tours. They play it like it's from this era. Fast yep. Kiss. So fascinating stuff to start off the tour with that, those kind of songs there. Yeah, you were right, Tom. They those two songs come out of the set list. What jumps in the set list then afterwards is Black Diamond. Thrills in the night come in. Yep. Oh, Susanna, it's a fucking gimmick. Stupid For some shit. Reason, I yeah, that's Gene Solo, which is interesting because they dropped Firehouse. Yep. So this is like now, wait a minute, how is Gene nope. doing? Yeah, no, no, right now, 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 what do I do? So yep. Gene does it after War Machine. Yep. So that's new. And then they have a couple things where they did, they did medleys like of, of Banga Gone, Hey Joe, La Bamba, uh, Immigrant Song, Sunshine of Your Love. Like stupid shit like that. They're not real songs, but those are the different ones that kind of came in. So if you take that opening night set list, add in a black diamond and thrills in the night, really. And then you got really what was played on this set. Yep. And, uh, and you know, they played England for a while in October 11th. They played uh, in Ipswich, England. And I guess they did a broadcast of that show. That's yep. going to be out there somewhere, right? Yep. Not many songs on it. It's a partial set list here listed in the great Kurt Gooch book, Kiss Alive Forever. Yeah. But, well, uh, this, 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 this set was, is, was, um, it's broadcast on a BBC radio, uh, FM radio show. So a lot of times bootlegs are available of those. I have a couple, I have a couple bootlegs of that are, they're, they're FM broadcasts. Uh, I, I'm not sure if, if there's one of this. I'm sure somebody listening could figure that out. But yeah, anytime there's an FM broadcast, you can be pretty certain that there might be a bootleg following it. Yeah, so we moved to October 15th, London, England, Wembley Arena. Uh, I don't know. That's not Wembley Stadium because capacity is only 8,000. Um, Paul introduced Eric as, quote, the little man in the tub, which was a reference to an incident where Eric had unwittingly allowed a girl to photograph him naked in a bathtub. The picture was quickly distributed throughout the region. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. And then also on this one here, October 15th, there was a cover of whole lot of love that they used to end the show after black diamond. Wow. And there is an audio recording somewhere that circulates out there of this show, which is kind of interesting. Then you get into October 21, 1984 in Denmark. Yep. Uh, I guess they lip synced I Love It Loud, Lick It Up, and Heaven's on Fire for Veronica's Strained Trace, uh, a daytime uh, beach performance taped at a seaside resort in the Netherlands. I would love to see if that shows up on YouTube if, if that's out there. Another cool tidbit here. Bob Kulik was in the audience for the show because he was on tour with Holland at the time with Meatloaf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meatloaf. Yeah. Well, the next day, October 22nd, Bon Jovi canceled because they were arrested at a McDonald's in Oslo. 
<laughs> I, I wish there was more information on that. Sure Let's could, find it. But I know, really. Funny. That's yeah, that's awesome. And then the, and then on the 24th, Bon Jovi was not allowed to perform because they had insufficient room for their equipment. Ah, insufficient data, John. <laughs> <laughs> terrible, terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. All right. October 26th. Uh, this was a temp hold date, and they played this at Sweden. Uh, there was 7,000 people here. Paul fell twice at the beginning of the show, and Gene <laughs> had to t- I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Paul fell twice at the beginning of the show, and Gene had to take over lead vocals briefly. <laughs> wow, he took a terrible tumble. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well, well, my head was all mashed apart. <laughs> Poor Paul. Oh, uh, yeah. So oh, they continue through Europe, hitting like Sweden, West Germany. For all you young people out there, yes, there was a West Germany at the time. I know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, good Switzerland, call. Switzerland, Belgium, the Netherlands. Um, Here's an interesting one on November 4th. They were yeah, in the Belgium, the Netherlands one. Yeah, yeah, they were in the Netherlands. Gene and Paul briefly played the drums during the show. <laughs> and Paul also included a brief excerpt of Deuce. During his solo. Is there a need for a Paul Stanley guitar solo? Never. <laughs> that never. No. Nope. All, right. All right. So the last tour is in Paris, France for Europe in 84. Yep. And uh, that was their final performance of Strutter on the Animalized Tour. I don't remember when the last time Strutter came back. Probably hot in the shade, if that. I don't know. Yeah. Tell them the story of the ping pong balls. On the last uh, <laughs> show of the tour, Bon Jovi dropped... 2,000 ping pong balls on Kiss. It was hilarious. At first, there were only one or two that you saw, then three, then four, then the entire lot of them. And of course, when they hit the stage on the floor, they bounced right up again, which made it look like a wall of white. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, and and now, mind you guys, up till now, it's Bruce playing. Bruce That's is right. playing throughout all this. Yep, good call. Yeah, so now call. the tour goes to North America. Yep. And the first stop is um Bethlehem Allentown, Pennsylvania. And then they start traveling the rest of the US, hitting New York, doing a couple shows there. Uh I would say about four or five. Then they hit the great Worcester, Massachusetts. Yes, that's right. Yep. The band the band begins to play Firehouse prior to Rock and Roll Night, but the attempt was cut short before the first verse. Why even try? Yeah. Uh and that was a sellout. That was a complete sellout there. Almost 10,000 people, and they had Queensryche opening up for them. Oh, Zeus, you would love that show. Oh, Queensryche with rough lips. <laughs> anyway, now we get, we'll get. we skip up to November 27, 1984. This is in Baltimore. Yep. And this is Mark St. John's first performance with Kiss. Yeah, but it's weird. Read, read what happens here. This is weird. Bruce performed during the final third of the show before Mark joined the band. On stage, beginning with Under the Gun, all five men there's, members bowed together. That's weird. I don't under, like if, if Mark St. John was okay to play, why did Bruce start the show? And yeah. Then Mark finished it. That, that's, I don't know what I, I just thought that I thought that was interesting and kind of odd, but yeah. November 28th in Poughkeepsie, Mark plays the whole show. That's what's on off the soundboard. That's right. That's what we have. Yep. And the attendance was 3,020. And it was hot that day if you have that CD. Remember? So, so explain to me this. What the? So they just played a sold out Worcester Centrum that had 10,000 people. They go to Poughkeepsie, New York and play us. This place is sold out. The capacity is 3,000. It's sold out. How do you? What is that? That's know. so. That's weird. But whatever. I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah, and if you and, show. And, and, Zeus, and Zeus is right, if you if you if you if you have that off the soundboard, it's hot. <laughs> uh, the next show is November 29th, nineteen eighty four, in in uh, Binghamton, New York. Capacity seventy two hundred. Yep. This is the last show Mark St. John plays with Kiss. His final performance. Final show. Yep, he played three live shows with Kiss. December 2nd, 1984, Bruce is back. The attendance was 10,393, capacity 10,500. Not bad, right? That's amazing, yeah. And these are Queensryche has been opening up for them, so. Yep. And then uh, December 4th in St. Louis, they add um, 
Thrills in the Night to the set list. Yeah, yeah, first time that was added. You know what I love about this set list? You see how they're mixing around songs from the new album that they're touring on? It's like, oh, we'll take out I've Had Enough, or this night, oh, this night we'll play Thrills in the Night, or this night we'll whatever, we'll keep it. Like, I, that's that's amazing. That's what a band like Metallica does, or, or a band like Rush, you know, or or a band or a band like Kiss. They used to do this. Yeah, unfortunately, you're right, buddy. Yep. They don't do this anymore. No. So December 7th, 1984, it's in Fort Wayne, Indiana. But the comment here from the book by Kurt Gooch says, after only six months and three performances with Kiss, Mark St. John was fired as Kiss's lead guitarist. St. John, who'd been traveling with the band, was sent home during the day. During the show, bottles were repeatedly thrown at the stage. Perhaps the fans didn't like Gene's wig. (laughs) So I love the fact about how his final show mark st john's final show was november 29th and then it took him nine days to fire him they just made him like hang around for a while (laughs) yeah why don't you uh why don't you hang out at catering for a little bit buddy yeah really december 8th 1984 detroit michigan cobo arena uh i think we know this one which i believe is animalized live uh uncensored capacity to 8500 bruce kulik was also made an official yep. member of kiss and the concert was broadcast live on wllz yep and kiss filmed this show for a, a broadcast on mtv um on january 26 1985 and then a modified version of this was that was released and that became animalized live uncensored so december 14th is interesting so that's the uh richfield which is cleveland ohio uh they shot Thrills in the Night video. Yep. Apparently, they had some different, like, long video, like, format, and they were playing characters and stuff, and they sound, it felt like it was cheesy, so they dropped it. Audience shots for Thrills in the Night video were filmed in Richfield. Some of the footage later wound up in Paul's Rockers Against Drug public service announcement. Oh, this Jesus. marks the final live performance of Thrills in the Night. Runaway Jean's first theatrical film, opened nationwide yep and then the following night december 15th 84 in kentucky all the close-up shots and conceptual footage for thrills of the night video were filmed at the commonwealth convention center on december 16th originally the director intended to include conceptual footage featuring the band member in various roles such as eric portraying an, as an office manager <laughs> one shot the footage was deemed too hokey <laughs> it remains unreleased to this day. The video is re-edited to include licensed videotape excerpts from Animalized Live Uncensored home video. Unfortunately, Polygram, who does not own the footage, didn't option the home video rights, thus the absence of Thrills in the Night on Kiss's 1987 home video exposed. Oh, somebody's going to get their hands on that. Wow. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, Eric, you're the office manager here. Okay. <laughs> well, I know. What, what What does that have anything to do with? But then again, what does the videos for freaking Lick It Up have anything to do with? I agree. Yeah. We'll skip to January 3rd, 1985. Yep. Apparently, the local lighting tech, John Addington, fell to his death from oh, the lightning fine. rig during the changeover between the acts. Holy yeah. shit. It's fucking brutal, I didn't dude. need to get into that. Yeah. They brushed him to the hospital and he succumbed to his injuries. Just, that's fucking brutal. Yep. Yeah. January 21st, 1985, Pensacola, Florida, the Pensacola Civic Center Crocus opened up. Oh. C- capacity a little over 10,000 and the attendance was just around 4700. It was the very first event ever at the Pensacola Civic Center. And it was added to the itinerary because the uh Chattanooga concert was canceled. I'm going to skip ahead, Tom, and then you get into March, late February and March and they go up to Canada. Yeah, that's when they grab Dawkins as the opening act for them. There. Yeah, that's interesting. Yep. And then when they come back to the states, uh, Dawkins is uh, doing some more, and then they finish up the tour with Wasp as the opening act. And look at that: East Rutherford, New Jersey, Brendan Byrne Arena, where the Devils used to play. Capacity fifteen thousand nine hundred and twenty-eight, and the place is sold out. Kiss and Wasp in 1985. What a fucking show that was. And before that, the night before, they played at the Springfield Civic Center 
uh, in front of about 6,600 people. And again, Wasp is opening up them there. So uh, pretty badass way to end the tour right there. Yeah. So that March 29th last night was says the last appearance of the classic Kiss logo sign. Yeah. Yep. Pretty badass way. The, the funny thing about this tour is just the attendance and just all over the place. Like they sold out Brendan Byrne Arena, 16,000 seat arena. But the night before, they couldn't sell out a 7,000 seat arena in Massachusetts. Yeah. And, and two nights before that, they couldn't sell out a 12,000 seat arena in Pittsburgh. So it, it, it's really weird how the, how the attendance worked out for the show or well, for this tour, I should say. But I think the big thing for this tour that most Kiss fans kind of remember is the music being played fast and the whole Bruce yep. starting with the band and the brief Mark St. John experiment. Yeah. Oh, t- totally. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's what makes this, um, you know, kind of like iconic or classic, we should say in, in kiss world. And the other thing is for kiss army is animalized live uncensored. That's what they think of this tour. Oh God. And yeah. That should have been released. That should have been kissed alive three. It should have been out there. It's a testament to the band at that time being fast kiss, new style, new eighties band. Yep. And, it, and, it t- and it hit an era because I really believe between Creatures of the Night, Lick It Up, and Animalize, they were about as fast and hard as can be. Once you no get doubt. into Asylum, they slow down. They I weren't think that's why this, I think this tour was really added some balls to it. We talked about it already, but I just want to kind of reiterate it. That I think this tour was even ballsier because of those opening bands. Think of that Wasp, Dawkin. Before when they were bad at Queens, right? When they were bad at, for bon all the Jovi. jokes we Bon Jovi. Bef, I mean, for all the jokes we make about Crocus, Crocus was heavy back then. Like that's a sick. But tour. even those, great, even the great opening bands, Crocus and another one, Steal something, whatever. They only did like one or two shows. But Wasp, Dawkins, um, Queens, bon right? Bon Jovi, Queens, right? Did a bunch of shows. Yeah, that's an amazing tour. For, yeah, and I know uh, because our Patreons, if you want to join our Patreon. Uh, group there depending on what tier you choose you would have already found out that we were doing this episode we had some of our uh, awesome patreon people chime in and say that they saw this tour some people said this was the first time they ever saw kiss on this tour so that's pretty cool too so yeah i agree i agree well tom uh that was the analyzed tour what we do next is always something fun for us yeah we start ranking things yes we love ranks and the first thing we rank is the costumes tom okay and I will tell you first, people, what we've done so far. We've done the Harder Than Hell Tour, Dress to Kill Tour, Spirit of 76 Tour, Lick It Up Tour, Hot in the Shade, World Domination, Hottest Show on Earth, Freedom the Rock Tour. Yep. How have you ranked your costumes, Tom? So my costumes, I have Lick It Up last, and then Hot in the Shade, World Domination, Hottest Show on Earth, Freedom to Rock, Hotter Than Hell, Dress to Kill, and Spirit of 76 Destroyer. So I like this just because I like this era, like 1984, specifically 1984 is kind of a cool, badass year in rock because the music is still heavy and hard. It hasn't gone full cheese, full glam yet. And I think the band looks that way. Yeah, they got some of the animal skins or whatever, but I still think they look kind of cool. Not as cool as Hot in the Shade. I think Hot in the Shade was, I really like that look. So long story short, I'm going to bump this. To number eight, I'm going to keep Lick It Up last. So Lick It Up's going to go last, and I'm going to put this in at number eight. Any specific reason why it's above Lick It Up? Uh, I just think Lick It Up was just kind of a weird look. It was their first tour without makeup, without costumes, mm-hmm. so I, I don't, I wasn't really a big fan of it. It looked good. I just felt like something about the Animal Eyes thing just, I don't know. I Like I said, I, those bands that opened up for them really, really cemented that that era of music for me. And I think Kiss fit there, and I think they looked it. So maybe I'm putting a little bit more about what I think of how they looked and maybe how they actually looked. But that's where I'm going to put it. Okay. So um, I had, from number eight to number one, Lick It Up, Hot in the Shade, World Domination, Freedom of Rock, Hottest Show on Earth, Hotter Than Hell, Dressed to Kill, and Spirit 76 as my favorite costumes. I'm putting this last. And it's not okay. because it's dead last. I just, uh, 
I, I put it up against Lick It Up. I just I'm not a big fan of the animal print stupid shit. I think of okay. cheesiness. That makes but sense. I didn't think the band looked that bad. I, again, it's almost a toss up between this and Lick It Up. Yeah, and Hot in the Shade, really. Okay, um, but I put this at nine. All right. Okay? Yep. Let's go to the stage now, Tom. Uh, okay. How did you rank the stages? So at number eight, last, I have World Domination, then Hottest Show on Earth, Freedom to Rock, Hotter Than Hell, Dress to Kill, Lick It Up, Spirit of 76, and I have Hot in the Shade at number one. Uh, this is just, you know, a recycled stage. You know, I'm not going to fault them for that. A lot of bands did that in the era. There's nothing special about it. I think the animal print stuff is, I mean, I would call it silly, but they're touring for Animal Eyes. Um, but I'm going to put it last. Yeah, Tom, uh, I understand that. Mine is eight to one world domination, hottest show on earth, hotter than hell, dress to kill, freedom of rock, lick it up tour, hot in the shade is two, one is spirit of 76. This is last for me as well. Okay. Isn't it funny how, you know, this is, this is like the magic of kiss is that we love this tour. We love the set list. We love the band. We're like, yeah, this is la- this is how good fucking Kiss is. I'm sorry. Every once in a while, I like to gush about the band that we love. So yeah, no, and, I, mean, and, I, and, I, you know, I just think it's that. funny that like, like we love all this, but it, it's it. Look at what it's going up against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we go to the set list. Now, usually in the set list, Tom, mm-hmm. we we usually take what the generic set list is. Yep. And we say how many number of songs there are. So let's take away the solos. Yep. I think generically this tour had 17 songs. Okay. Okay. And the generic 17, I'm going to give as what they opened up with. How's that? Yep. yep I've had enough. A- DRC, Burn Bitch Burn, Cold Gin, Strutter. Under the gun, fits like a glove, get all you can take, young and wasted, heavens on fire, war machine, I still love you, I love it loud, love gun, preachers tonight, rock and roll night, lick it up. What is not on this set list is Black Diamond and Thrills in the Night. Are you taking anything out and replacing them with Black Diamond and Thrills in the Night? No, I I love that set list. That set list is, for that era, that is a borderline perfect set list, especially having burn bitch burn and get all you can take in there. Okay. And, and of course, and then it still has, it still has strutter. It still has love gun. It still has rock and roll all night. It's, it's amazing. I fucking, I love that. Okay. Yep. So for me, Tom, I'm taking out strutter. Okay. And I'm putting in black diamond. Of course. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yep. And I'm also going to take, I want to hear thrills of the night live just because you don't hear it. And I'm not crazy Um, about that, but that's, that's fair. I'll take out Preachers of the Night okay. and put Thrills in the Night. All right. Because I like fast DRC, fast love gun, right? So that's what I would do. Now, let's rank the set list, Tom. How are yours okay. ranked right now? So right now, my set list is World Domination, number eight, Hotter Than Hell, Dress to Kill. They get penalized because there's not a lot of albums. Freedom to Rock, Hottest Show on Earth, Lick It Up. Spirit of 76 Destroyer and Hot in the Shade at number one. I am putting this bad boy at number three. Wow. Yep. Really? Yep. I'm bumping down and Lick It Up just because this has the great songs from Lick It Up, but it has the addition of the great songs from Animal Eyes. So, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. This is going to be number three for me. So, for me, I have World Domination, Freedom Rock, Hottest Show on Earth, Hot in the shade, lick it up, hotter than hell, uh, dressed to kill in spirit of 76. What I think I did differently than you is because you penalize hotter than hell because it's just not that many songs. I still right. say it's them at their prime playing those songs. Well, yeah, but, prime, I, didn't, I, but like, I, I, I was just looking at the raw. I understand. Yeah. I know, but I, I'm looking at who's playing it when. That's fine. I, I take that into a, a fact. Like, okay. lick it up is Vinnie Vincent playing these songs. Mm-hmm. So for me, I'm going to put this underneath Lick It Up. I'm putting this at five. Okay. Okay. So did everything I, that you everything you just said about considering Vinnie Vincent. See, I consider all that when we rank the tour itself. Yeah, Tom. I just, um, again, I, I have these higher than Hot in the Shade because Hot in the Shade, by this point, I've heard Bruce in concert. 
And it's a little bit of a mixture, but the mixture is generic songs that we've all heard. Yeah. At end of the road. But I should also kind of like you put yourself in these positions because you're like, yeah, but if you heard this in 89, you're not used to it. I'm using 2024 eyes and ears to judge hot in the shade because I'm like, ah, now they're playing this again. Ah, no, you're, no, you're right. Like, and I'm like, you're I right. want to hear those songs. You're right. But I'm looking at it. I'm judging it by 2024 standards, people. So to me, I'm like, I don't want to fucking hear those. Bringing those classics back. I get it, but it doesn't do much for me. Overall total rank is next, Tom. Here's the fun okay. part. What do you okay. got? So for me, this is overall tour. I have world domination last at number eight. Hottest show on earth, freedom to rock, lick it up, hotter than hell, hot in the shade, spirit of 76. And yes, I put dress to kill at number one. Now for me, when I rank the tours, I'm encompassing everything. The songs, yep. the caught, the appearance, like it's the, the members. Thing. Yeah. The members, it's the full thing for me. Um, So I love this animalized tour. But this is tough because it's going to go either above or below this particular tour. I'm going to bump it up. I'm going to I'm going to give it a little bit of boost just because of the set list, kind of like I did with the set list here. So I'm going to put this at five. I'm going to put it right above. I'm going to put it right above. Lick it up. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, Animalize goes at number five. Yeah. Uh, For me, Tom, I have world domination. Is eight freedom of rock seven hottest show on earth six hot in the shade is five four is lick it up three hotter than hell two dress to kill one is spirit of 76 i uh, it'll be a wonder if that ever gets beat but we forgot to mention when you say world domination tour that's yep. the kiss aerosmith tour honking on bobo roximus somebody- roximus maximus yeah, that's what Aerosmith called it. Yeah. Kiss called their world. I think somebody recently put a post on Loudcast. They did. And they said, yeah, honk it up on mobile. Fucking horrendous. That's a fucking the bane of your existence. Oh, my God. It's- All right. <sighs> Where am I putting this? I'm going to put Animalize right underneath Lick It Up. Uh, the okay. Beginning of Bruce Kulick. Great songs. A lot of variety stuff. So you have I, it at five I, also. Yeah. Okay. I, I I just can't put it above Vinny. I, I want to hear okay. Vinny. Yeah, that makes sense. And different stuff and lick it up first time and stuff. So yep. I put this at five. Man, yeah. I love these tour uh, episodes, man. Oh, I me love too. I, lo- I, lo- and I love, I love, and I love some of like the, I mean, it's easy to gush over the makeup tours, you know, dress to kill, destroyer and stuff. But I like talking about lick it up and animalize and because these are tours that I just think they're a little bit interesting, you know, especially this one with the Bruce and the Mark St. John stuff. Oh, absolutely, Tom. I mean, what's what's funny is like, I think there are 35 tours altogether. We've only done uh, eight. <laughs> Problem is, I know. The last 15 are the same fucking tours. Yeah, it's it's true. Yep. You know. All right, Tom. What we do next is we go to question of the week. You got one? Yeah, we do. Now, this is a question. Uh, we um, um, Again, we've been doing this for almost 300 episodes. God bless. Uh, and sometimes we get similar questions here and there over the years because we get new listeners or people want to hear our thoughts. So I'm sure... We've got this question over the years, but I don't recall if we ever did. And if we did, it must have been a long time ago, but I want to bring it up again because somebody asked it. Uh, And this comes from Larry on Facebook. And the question is simply, what is the first Kiss album that you would play for somebody that wants to get into Kiss? And the reason I think this is also relevant is because I was having a conversation on the side with one of my friends about a band that I'm not super familiar with. And I was like, what, what's a good album to go to if I want to kind of jump into this band? And they were like, oh, definitely this one. I'm like, okay. And I, it, 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 so I thought this question was relevant because I'm like, yeah, I, this is so different. So where do you go? Studio album, Destroyer, live album, Alive. I mean, I know it's generic. Okay, so I was going to jump at Destroyer, but I was like, do I want a brand new listener to hear Great Expectations? Do I want a brand new listener to hear Beth? Which I guess they're good, they're hits. So for me, if it wasn't Destroyer, I was going to do Rock and Roll Over. Only because it's super raw, super heavy. The band is like, 
if if Love Gun's not their prime, I think Rock and Roll Over is. It's got you know Colin Doctor Love. It's got Take Me. It's got badass solos. It's got a good song by Peter. I just think the band is really like I think that's like just the gritty raw kiss right there. So it would probably rock and roll over either that or uh, God, I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe lick it up. Yeah, I mean, you know, I considered I, Rick lick it up as yeah, well. Yeah, but the problem with lick it up is it's really now you're talking kiss is Paul and Gene. It's Paul and Gene's album, correct? Correct. And it's heavy kiss. Yeah. And it's a phase of Kiss. Exactly. Where it's not really most, indicative where, of their sound. Royer is, you could say, the first almost nine albums. Or yep. Whatever, yeah. Kind of. No, that's that's fair. It's a great question. Again, I like I like when we talk about these things. Again, yeah, we've been around for a while. Thank God for you guys for making us around for a while. And sometimes we like to revisit things because you know we got a lot of new listeners. So great question, Larry. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tom. Where can people find us? Always go to our website, shoutoutloudcast.com. That's where you can find all the episodes. Shout it out loudcast, Dorm Damage, Album Review Crew, Zeppelin Chronicles. Yes, Zeppelin Chronicles is still alive. Bear with us. We only were working on an Amazon best selling book. So we got time that we have to, you know, use wisely. So it's coming. Uh, and you can also find all of our social media links there Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, threads, links to our Patreon. Thank you, Tom and Chris, for joining the family. Links to our Amazon merch our Amazon shopping and a link right on the landing page to buy aforementioned number one, Amazon bestseller, raise your glasses right there on our website. You can do that. Uh, if you want to have a question of the week read, like we did with Larry, please do so and send us messages on our website or go directly to our email at shoutoutloudcast at gmail.com. We read one every week and we got a mailbag episode that we do every, at the end of the year. So please jump in and be part of that. We love that. And we always like to say that we are a proud member of the Pantheon podcast network of shows. Yeah, you can DM us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We're on threads and TikTok, motherfucker. <laughs> Check out our Spotify playlist and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And give us one of those five star child reviews. Not only now do we say that for Apple Podcasts, Spotify, please. If you've purchased Raise Your Glasses and you enjoy it, go on Amazon and give us a five-star child review and why you like the book on Amazon. It's a huge help. It moves the book along, brings it to more eyes and ears, and is a big help to us. And we really appreciate that. Um, And then you can always just visit the website where you can go and purchase right on the landing pages right there. uh, Raise Your Glasses, the book. You can look at our rankings. We just did a a tour ranking. So you can go there and see what our previous rankings were for that or songs or videos, whatever we've done in the past, even mm-hmm. album review crew, Zeppelin chronic, whatever. It's all there on our website. Please check that out. And we always like to end on famous last words. Tom, do you have any? Oh, of course I do. I always have famous last words. How many times have they lied with the truth in their eyes? Treat you like dirt. Wasting the days of our lives. They try and deny it. Ain't going to buy it. Just look around. Before it's all over, it's going to get rough. Ooh, Paul's such a badass. Oh, it's going to get rough. I didn't know about the modern ways of life. I didn't really care. I never gave a damn about the future. I never got my share. Tom, Loudcasters, Kiss Army, thank you. Guys, you're the best. Thank you so much. Hope you guys like this. I can't wait to hear stories about people that went and saw this tour. And if it was as badass as it sounded like it was when we were reading about it. So, Zeus, as always, my friend, thank you. Peace out, Girl Scout. Hit the music. What I'd like now is for all you the noise down while I show your ladies what a real sexy man looks like. Listen, all you people out there sitting on rented furniture, settle down. Cut the music. Anybody seen Richie? Anybody know why Richie did Bobby Lupo?